hell, judgment, and eternity. Part 21 Wickedness inside us needs to sprout up and be exposed. Chapter 1 The hidden wickedness residing inside us needs to sprout up and flourish and be exposed and become evident, but only so it can then be destroyed. If these things aren't made to come to the surface, they remain concealed beneath a thin veneer, like a whitewash. God hardened the hearts of the kings to do battle so they could be destroyed. But the battle takes time. Joshua 11 So Joshua took all that land and he captured all their kings and put them to death. Joshua waged war a long time with all these kings. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts. To meet Israel in battle in order that he might utterly destroy them. So Joshua took the whole land and gave it for an inheritance to Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. The divisions are the parts. A tribe is allotted a piece of land. Wickedness sprouts up and flourishes, but only so it can be destroyed. Psalms 92 How great are your works, Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man has no knowledge, nor understands this, that when the wicked sprouted up like grass, and all who did iniquity flourished, it was only that they might be destroyed for evermore. But you, Lord, are on high for ever. For your enemies perish, Lord. All who do iniquity are scattered. The righteous man flourishes like the palm tree. He grows like a cedar in Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord, they flourish in the courts of our God. They still yield fruit in old age. They are full of sap and very green. It's normal for those wicked aspects of our heart to flourish earlier in life. But then they should fade and be burned. In contrast, the righteousness 
should be flourishing and becoming deeply established. It can then go on to produce its fruit later in life. Chapter 2. It is what is in man's heart that is evil and defiling and needs to be uprooted, cut off, destroyed. This earth, the old self, has a number of parts or members, but any offspring they produce perishes. Romans 7 Therefore, my brothers, you also were made to die to the law through the body of Christ, so that you might be joined to another, joined to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law we're at work in the members of our body to produce fruit for death. But now we have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, so that we serve in newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. Matthew 15 Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant shall be uprooted. Mark 7 For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. First Corinthians 4 Do not go on passing judgment before the time, but wait until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's hearts. And then each man's praise will come to him from God. When the Lord comes is often thought of as in the future. But Jesus didn't actually speak in terms of his coming being off in the future. See John 5, 
verse 25, for example. The hour is coming and now is. Psalms 21 Your hand finds out all your enemies. Your right hand finds out those who hate you. You make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord swallows them up in his wrath and fire devours them. Their offspring you destroy from the earth, and their descendants from among the sons of men. Religion can be like whitewash, superficially applied over sinfulness to conceal it, which defrauds the people. Jeremiah 8 What kind of wisdom do they have? They are greedy for gain. They heal the brokenness of the daughter of my people superficially, saying, Peace, peace, but there is no peace. Ezekiel 13 The prophets who prophesy from their own inspiration, who follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing, have been like foxes among ruins. You have not built the wall around the house of Israel to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. They see falsehood and lying divination who are saying, The Lord declares, when the Lord has not sent them. Yet they hope for the fulfilment of their word. They have no place in the council of my people, nor are they written down in the register of the house of Israel, nor do they enter the land of Israel. It is definitely because they have misled my people. By saying peace, when there is no peace, and when anyone builds a wall, they plaster it over with whitewash. So tell those who plaster it over with whitewash that it falls. A flooding rain comes. When the wall has fallen, are you not asked, where is the plaster with which you plastered it? So I tear down the wall which you plastered over with whitewash and bring it down to the ground so that its foundation is laid bare. And when it falls, you are consumed in its midst. 
because you disheartened the righteous with falsehood when I did not cause him grief. You have encouraged the wicked not to turn from his wicked way and preserve his life. Paul made a reference to a priest being like a whitewashed wall in Acts 23 verse 3. Ezekiel 22 There is a conspiracy of her prophets in her midst. Her is Jerusalem, the holy place where we, our new creation, dwell with God. Like a roaring lion tearing the prey, they have devoured lives and have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in the midst of her. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. Much preaching in God's name is actually violence against his people. They have made no distinction between the holy and the profane, and they have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. Her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, This is what the Lord God says, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery, and they have wronged the poor and needy, and have oppressed the sojourner without justice. So I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Matthew 23 Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may become clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. 
So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. I may wish to protest that I am different from the Pharisees, but God is cleaning me on the inside too. This was Hell, Judgment and Eternity, Part 21.